Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Adam and thank you for taking the time out of your day to join me today. So DHT, another oil tanker company, but this time they're specialized in very large crude carriers or VLCCs, just reported their second quarter results and I have to say I am pleased with what I saw. So pretty much um, their net income for second quarter of 2020 was $135.8 million. Uh, as compared to Q1 result of uh, in the first quarter of $72.2 million, right? Uh, and this compares to last year in the same quarter, a uh, $10.5 million loss, okay? So that's looking pretty good uh, for the upcoming earnings for NAT. And so after this news uh, from DHT, <coughs> DHT stock is up. If we're going to refresh it right now by 4%. Um, weekly, it's up by about 2%. But right before earnings, it was like 560. And then this represented like a 4% move, right? And the tanker industry in general is doing uh, pretty well after this news. So NAT right now is also up uh, by around 3%. And again, they're reporting earnings on August 17th. And then if we look at the Euronav, it's up by 2%. TK tankers up by 4%. Uh, Scorpio tankers and Frontline, all of these tankers are up um, pretty significantly after DHT reports earnings, uh, right? So <clears throat> overall, they posted a net income of 81 cents per share. Um, and then another significant factor is that they also increased... Um, their dividend payout by 37 cents if we go where is this here so um so if you are an, a shareholder of uh, dht by august 26th you will get paid a dividend of 48 cents which is a 37 percent increase from 35 cents they paid in q1 of 2020 so dht really likes to um reward their shareholders with dividend payouts right so you can see this is pretty huge right and so 48 cents uh is you know like nine percent of the stock's worth right now or whatever so in just one quarter right uh which is like very significant right we're, we're talking about a stock that's like uh close to six dollars right now so that's pretty huge um so let's look at some highlights here as well so net income of course 136 million um and also they talk about, again, increasing their cash dividend to $0.48 cents per share, payable on September 2nd, as long as you're a shareholder on August 26th, oh, which is actually my birthday. Uh, and they also said that in June, the company entered into a two-year TCE, a time charter equivalent agreement with an option to extend a 4,100, 4, per day. for, And they just own VLCCs. I believe they own uh, 27 of them. Um, and so TCEs, they're not involved in the spot market. So basically that means that they have the option of extending to a two-year contract with an oil company that needs to move uh, oil around from one place to another. So again, you know, 41,800 is significantly lower than what they, um, usually had for their tankers, right? Because as you can see, uh, in the second quarter of 2020, the company's VLCC operating in the spot market achieved a 92,100 per day, right? So pretty much like less than half is like this two-year agreement, right? Uh, and the company's VLCCs on time charter, so those that had to be booked ahead of time, earned 62,700, right? So even this 40, 41,800 is still pretty good. I mean, if we look at um, just the general spot market for VLCCs right now in August, they are working at earnings of 16,700. So it's it's good to see that, um, let's go back here. It's good to see that it's significantly above the spot market as of right now, right? Um, so again, here is, you know, this is why they earned so much money is because they were able to operate their VLCCs in the spot market at an average of $92,100 per day. Um, and then on their time chart equivalents, they're able to do 62,700 per day, which is still huge. Right. And so the combined average was $83,300 per day, which is insane. Right. And so, I mean, this, uh, is basically, you know, why 
the earnings per share and adjusted net income was 135 million, right? So as you can see here, you know, almost double that of Q1 of 2020, which is, you know, absolutely insane, right? Uh, and you look at like, of course, 2018, they were losing money, 2019, you know, not doing too bad. But then second quarter of 2019, losing 10 million, third quarter of 2019, losing 9 million, and they're just doing better for themselves uh, as the year progresses, right? Um, and of course, increasing their dividend all throughout as well, right? Uh, except from, you know, 2018 to 2019. And then, but yeah, so this is, again, very good news. Uh, also looks like they decreased their net debt, which is really, really nice. Increase their cash and cash equivalents by quite a lot. Uh, so that's really good to see. And so it's also interesting to see what happens for uh, what they're booking at uh, for Q3. So DHT uh, so far in the third quarter of 2020, 61% of the available VCC VLCC spot days have been booked at an average rate of uh, 51,400 per day. So again, that's pretty damn good still. 51,400 per day um, is good. And so as such, the spot and TCE bookings equal 75% of the total capacity for the third quarter. Um, and it has been covered at an average rate of $51,200 per day, right? So again, not bad at all having uh, three quarters of their days booked at an average of $51,200 per day, right? So, uh, and of course they have, DHT has a fleet of 27 VLCCs. Um, and of course, so, when we're this is really really good in terms of um, of what we're expecting for NAT. As you can see, it already sort of is reflecting sort of in the stock price of NAT. Uh, I mean, up on the week, it's not up by a lot, but still, uh, you know, up on the month, it's been by like anywhere from like four dollars and thirty five cents now all the way to four dollars and sixty cents. As we can see, when it reached its lows at around four dollars, it's now up by thirteen percent. So I definitely like seeing that. Um, and one thing I will say is that right now the spot rates of their the Suze Max vessels are not looking too good. Uh, and I noticed that these potent partners, though, uh, this daily briefing does not necessarily reflect the numbers that uh, NAT puts on their websites when they release the spot rates of their tankers um, weekly on Friday, right? So just one thing to note, this gives like a rough estimate. But as you can see, it's sort of been a downtrend, the 10-day trend here has been a downtrend and then slowly upticking, right? So again, um, <clears throat> DHT owns solely VLCC carriers, whereas NAT operates in Suzmax. The difference is that VLCC can uh, have 2 million barrels of oil on their ships, whereas Suzmax can only have 1 million barrels of oil on their ships. But again, sort of the, the, their prices are pretty intercorrelated. So I will expect, uh, or I do expect that um, NAT will re be reporting similar earnings uh, and again, one thing to know is that even though that they missed, DHT missed um, the consensus estimate of 82 cents per share, but, but they earned like 81 cents per share. So that's basically the same thing. And this still shot the stock price up. So I'm pretty optimistic. Um, I look forward to covering NAT's earnings um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.